We didn't know anything about Antigua and Barbuda, except that they removed all COVID-related travel restrictions and welcomed everybody. That was more than enough for us after three years of COVID nightmares. In 1493, Columbus sighted Antigua, which he named after Santa Maria la Antigua, the Cathedral of Seville. Except for a six-month French occupation in 1666, the islands were exclusively under British rule from 1632 to 1981, when they became independent as a united nation. The island Antigua is located 3,500 kilometers or 4.5 hours by plane from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. You can fly non-stop from Toronto Pearson Airport to the small Caribbean twin island nation with Air Canada, WestJet, or Sunwing for 550 Canadian dollars. We also booked a small studio apartment on Airbnb for 160 US dollars a day and rented a small SUV for 60 US dollars a day. Yeah, car rental is expensive, but it is a must if you want to see the island. We landed in Antigua International Airport, named in honor of Sir Veer Cornwall Bird, the first Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda. This nice, clean, and modern 100 million US dollar airport was built in 2015 by China's Civil Engineering Construction Corporation and financed by the government of China. We went through immigration, picked up our bags, and cleared customs without inspection. Outside the arrival area, we were welcomed by the rental car company agent who walked us to our $60 a day Toyota Rush rental car waiting for us by the old terminal building. We inspected our Japanese-made rental car, signed the rental contract, and were on our way in about 15 minutes. When we were leaving the airport, we drove by the now-closed Sticky Wicket Cricket-themed restaurant and Coolidge Cricket Ground. Formerly known as the Stanford Cricket Ground, it was the scene of the 2008 controversial cricket match between the Stanford Superstars and England, in which the winners would pocket $20 million. Stanford Superstars won, and England lost. It's impossible to talk about Antigua without mentioning Alan Stanford, an American financial fraudster who is serving a 110-year federal prison sentence in Florida right now, for orchestrating the second largest investor fraud in U.S. history after Bernard Madoff. Mr. Stanford used to own the island's largest newspaper and was its biggest private employer and investor and was the first American to receive a knighthood from Antigua's government. The former Stanford International Bank of Antigua headquarters is less than a five-minute walk from the V.C. Bird International Airport and across the road from Coolidge Cricket Ground. Driving in Antigua is not for the faint of heart. Narrow streets, potholes, animals, lack of sidewalks, and crazy drivers. Lots of them. A good reliable map is essential. We used Google Maps for our navigation, but it was confusing at best. When we travel, we always buy local SIM cards for data, but this time we used eSIM from Aerolo, and it worked most of the time. The plan was seven days, one gigabyte for 10 US dollars, and can be activated online. After multiple wrong turns and U-turns, 45 minutes later, we finally arrived at our Airbnb home away from home. The Airbnb was a small studio apartment and was located in a secluded, peaceful, and less developed eastern part of the island. Almost every day we had uninvited visitors, birds stealing our breakfast, hermit crabs, even tarantulas. And every night we listened to the Whistling Tree Frog concert, which was very loud and lasted all night long. We had access to the pool and free use of a double kayak. We used the kayak almost every day to explore mangroves and nearby small uninhabited islands. One of them was only a 30 short paddling minutes away, known as Pelican Island. Pelican Island is a small 32-acre private island once owned by Alan Stanford, who purchased it in 2008 for 17 million US dollars. The island lies only about 137 meters from Antigua's main island and is used to be connected to the main island power grid. Unfortunately, now the only ruins left are from what used to be a house, water storage, and a boathouse. 
The island was recently sold for an undisclosed amount of money. The north side of the island has a nice lagoon with calm water, suitable for swimming and snorkeling. We also visited Crump Island, or Garbage Island as we named it, due to its very large amount of ocean trash on its coastline. Crump Island was named after a planter, slave owner, and legislator named Nathaniel Crump, who used to own this island in the early 18th century. Crump Island has a small abandoned rock quarry where we found a strange rock with tally marks. Maybe there was a prisoner counting the time he did there, or a tourist counting down the remaining days of his vacation. We will never know. One of the most popular tourist attractions in Antigua is the Stingray City Tour. This place was established in 2002 by Andrew Moody Stewart and Antigua environmentalist Foster Derrick. Now close to 4,000 people visit this place every month. Stingray City is a small private site in the open sea, located approximately 2.8 kilometers offshore in the Barge Reef in Mercer Creek Bay. We arrived to Stingray City, located in the northeast coast of the island in Seton's Village. The ticket price was 60 US dollars per person. Before we boarded the boat, we were given a 10 minute safety briefing about how we should behave ourselves with dangerous large wild sea creatures and how rare incident of stingray attacks are. Then we signed a liability waiver and we were asked to remove our shoes before boarding the boat. The reason was to protect the stingrays, but how my crocs can harm a stingray is still a mystery to me. Tip, wear at least swimming socks to protect your feet. It took us 10 minutes to get there. The day was windy, the water was wavy, it was murky, and in some places it was deeper than five feet. The experience wasn't very enjoyable. One member of our group was stung by a stingray and pretty much everyone was eager to go home. If you wish to watch the full report on this, please check the link below. Betty's Hope Historic Sugar Plantation is located only 10 minutes away by car from our Airbnb rental. It was established in 1650, shortly after the island had become an English colony. Christopher Codrington acquired the property in 1674 and named it Betty's Hope after his daughter. Codrington brought slaves from Africa's western coast to work the plantations. The estate was managed by a few Europeans, but the basic hard-skilled and unskilled labor force was provided by the African slaves. As many as 400 slaves were at the plantation at the peak of operations. Although slavery was abolished in 1834, Antigua sugar production remained an economic mainstay until the 1960s, when it was replaced by tourism. The Codringtons had 150 sugar mills in Antigua, of which Betty's Hope was the first one where they had introduced technological innovations and ideas to carry out large-scale cultivation, extraction, and manufacturing of sugar. Located an only 10-minute drive away from our island residence was arguably one of the best public beaches on the island, Long Bay Beach. This small beach, with white powdered sugar-like sand and calm, clear, shallow water, is home of the Pineapple Beach Club Resort. Long Bay Beach can get crowded on weekends and public holidays. Parking can be a problem. There are also restaurants and vendor stalls on the beach as well. It's good for people watching, not so good if you prefer solitude. Devil's Bridge National Park is located only 10 minutes away from Long Bay Beach, and it's a good idea to visit both of them on the same day. On the way from Long Bay Beach, we pass the Veranda Resort and Spa and Hammock Cove Resort and Spa. Devil's Bridge was legally constituted as a national park in the 1950s. It is a natural formation where angry sea meets the peaceful paradise. Within the park, there is a remarkable example of seawater erosion. Geologically, Devil's Bridge is a natural arch carved by the sea from soft and hard limestone. Legend says, Devil's Bridge was called so because of a lot of slaves from neighboring estates going there and throwing themselves overboard. It was an area of mass suicide, so people used to say that the devil had to have been there. The waters around Devil's Bridge are always rough, and anyone who falls over the bridge never comes out alive. It can get a bit touristy, especially when cruise ships arrive. 
Half Moon Bay is a crescent-shaped beach located on the Atlantic coast in the southeastern part of Antigua Island. It was a very windy day when we arrived. The Atlantic Ocean met us with huge waves and lots of sargassum, but the beach was big enough for us to find some shallow, calm water and sand free of this algae. There were very few people, probably due to windy and wavy conditions. I think it's called Half Moon Bay because one half of it is in the National Park and the other half is private property. The south private part of Half Moon Bay used to be home to 100 seaside rooms Half Moon Bay Hotel, built in the 1950s and visited by Audrey Hepburn, Elton John, John Le Carre, Bjorn Berg, and many other famous people. It was heavily damaged in September of 1995 by a Category 5 Hurricane Luis. Half Moon Bay Hotel has never opened up again. The Antiguan government decided to seize the property from an American owner. This lawsuit took many years. In 2015, the Antiguan government sold this land for 23 million U.S. dollars. The remains of the hotel were demolished in 2018 to clear the space for the Rosewood Half Moon Bay Resort with residences priced between 3.5 and 15 million U.S. dollars and plots of beachfront land from 10 to 25 million dollars each. The resort was originally scheduled to open in 2021, then again in 2022. We visited in November 2022 and didn't notice any activity except for tractors removing tons of sargassum from the beach. If you have a few spare millions and enjoy swimming in sargassum soup, give them a call. Located north of Half Moon Bay is Mill Reef Club, Antigua's first gated community for the rich and famous. Bunny Mellon used to own three acres of property here, where she hosted widowed Jackie Kennedy after JFK's assassination, as well as Hubert de Givenchy. Tori Birch, who is a famous fashion designer, if you didn't already know, bought Bunny Mellon's house in Antigua in 2018. Nelson's Dockyard is the world's only surviving Georgian naval dockyard built by enslaved Africans long before Horatio Nelson became the hero of the Battle of Trafalgar. Its purpose was to maintain Royal Navy warships, protecting Britain's valuable sugar-producing islands. Nelson was sent by Britain to enforce the Navigation Act, which barred foreign ships from trading with British colonies. Arriving in the summer of 1784, Nelson spent much of his three years there in the cramped quarters of a ship frigate Boreas, declaring Antigua to be an infernal hole and complaining in his letters he sent back home of melancholy and mosquitoes. The Caribbean was a hotbed of infectious diseases and the English harbor was particularly awful. It was a cesspool full of smells of human and maritime industry waste with millions of mosquitoes bred in the nearby swamps. Life in Antigua was harsh heat, malaria, and yellow fever, and it killed many slaves and British sailors. Rum was given to the sailors as part of their daily ration. It was a well-established tradition in the Royal Navy, well into the 20th century. Back then, rum was distilled using lead condensation coils. Exposure to lead in the colonial period is well known historically. Excessive consumption of Antiguan rum contaminated with toxic lead increased the death toll among sailors. Located opposite of the English harbor is one of the most popular beaches in Antigua, Galleon Beach. This beautiful beach was a former burial site for 18th century British sailors who fell victim to infectious tropical disease outbreaks. Located only about 5 to 10 minutes from Nelson's dockyard is Pigeon Point Beach. This lovely beach is a favorite spot for the local community. With sailboats and mountains as a backdrop, it's great for small kids and families. There's a car park and a small play area. Falmouth Harbor lies within walking distance from Nelson's Dockyard and Pigeon Point Beach. Falmouth's Harbor is not just the third deepest natural harbor in the world, it is also one of Antigua's biggest centers of activity. Falmouth's Harbor is a good spot for food, for drinks, and to dock your mega yacht, if you have one. You can observe billionaire's mega yachts moored up here. Only last year, a 120 million U.S. dollar super yacht, 
Alpha Nero, linked to Russian oligarch Andrei Guriev, has appeared in Antigua, as well as two yachts, the 67-meter Explorer Garçon and a 55-meter superyacht Halo, owned by a Russian oligarch, Roman Abramovich, were moored here for several months before heading to Morocco. Thank you for watching the first part of this video. In part two, we'll talk about Fig Tree Drive, Whaling's Nature Reserve, Rendezvous Bay Beach, Perns Point, and many more.